Suspension bushes. For most OEM vehicles, factory cars, and in the case of the factory Mazda MX-5, they're made from some form of rubber. Rubber's a good option, it's relatively cheap, it has a nice amount of compliance and comfort, but also makes sure the suspension can do its thing. It lasts a fair while, somewhere between 10 and 20 years, and, well, it's fairly cheap. But is it the right product when you're starting to talk about performance and track cars? Generally, most people would argue no. That said, there are some aftermarket alternatives out there from a variety of manufacturers. Most commonly, you would be looking at a polyurethane type bush, which is what I run on this car at the moment. Unfortunately, after about six years of track abuse, they're pretty well worn and, well, I'll show you that in a moment. The poly bushes are generally considered an upgrade from rubber. They're usually a bit harder and firmer and a little less compliant and give a bit more better road feel for the driver and understanding of how the car's performing. But they also have their negatives. They're generally considered that they can stick or bind. You need to lube them to try and prevent that, but really that lube, it doesn't last long in the suspension bush between the arm and the bush and all the bits that are moving around. They get sort of squeezed out and mostly that that lube's there just to keep the dirt out. Unfortunately, that means your arms start to stick and then, and then when your suspension's trying to, or your, your shocks and your springs are trying to push the, the uh, suspension arms down, the stickiness of your bushes prevents that and actually kind of effectively increases spring rate on your suspension, which means it's not doing exactly what you're asking it to do. So what are the fixes for that? Well, you can go super crazy high end. There are race cars or top end performance cars that might be running uh, rod ends for bushes and things like that, effectively deleting a bush completely. It's, the net result is a solid mounted suspension setup. Uh, there are some negatives there. Perhaps ride and comfort's probably going to be the most obvious one. What are the alternatives to that then? If you don't want a solid, hard, rod end type mount for your bushes or your suspension arms and you don't want rubber which is soft and squishy and you don't want poly which sticks well i guess the answer is this stuff so this is acetyl aka polyoxymethylene or as most people call it dalarin it's a plastic but it's got a lot of properties that are conducive to being a replacement for a traditional suspension bush it's self-lubricating, it seems to be nice and slidey, which means your suspension arm and the bolt that attaches it to the car can kind of move around. It's nice and firm, doesn't have any give, so it's going to be a lot firmer than a rubber or a poly. So there's lots of positives, which I guess leads us to where we are today. I've bought myself a Sad Fab Poly and Delrin bushing upgrade for the NB track car here. And there's a critical reason for why I've done that. Let me show you. So, this is pretty simple. As I mentioned, the bushes that I run on this thing, they've been here for something like six or more years. They've put up with quite a few track days and they're pretty much past their time. And the most obvious reason for that is the amount of give I've got in this suspension. Let me zoom you in. This is an exaggeration because this is actually the worst point of the whole car, the worst piece of suspension in the whole car uh, in terms of give, but I can, if I grab onto the hub via the brake caliper, you can see how much movement I've got there, it's terrible. So all of that give up the top here is slop in the suspension that I don't want. So how do we fix it? Well, we turn a block like this of rectangular acetyl into a nice round bush to fill these holes that would normally have a rubber bush or, or in my case currently have the poly bush. I should mention this stuff's so sticky. The lube that they send, I've got the energy suspension kit, the lube that they send with them is Super gluey. Anyway, obviously I don't have the skills or the uh, uh, the tools to turn something like this into a bush, but there are some people out there that do, and there are people out there that have done all the hard work to turn 
this sort of stuff into bushes. So what's the story? Well, it's pretty simple. If you head on to Miata Turbo, there's a big mega bushing thread where people talk about suspension bushes and they go on about all the pros and cons of the different types and they talk about some of the alternative or aftermarket options out there and eventually they came up with a whole heap of numbers and on uh, suspension diameter sizes and things to be able to make your own at home and fundamentally at the end of the day some dudes who call themselves sad fab have come up with a kit where they convert bits of acetyl or dalaran into suspension bushes and they include the appropriate sized sleeves and things that all bolt straight onto the car they also published the information freely and publicly so that if you have the tools at home you can make your own although not for commercial use you can't go and take their numbers and just go and sell the equivalent kit that they're supplying and kind of rip them off that's kind of cruel which i suppose takes us on to the next bit which is let me show you what i got delivered to me this week so i reached out to sad fab i can't remember how long ago it was quite a while and said hey really interested in your kit i'd like to buy one and well i think they're well known for not being a pro high-end company they're just a bunch of dudes who do this stuff in their spare time so they took their time and eventually my kit did turn up in the meantime i was also talking to maddie at hm speed shop about the same kit or at least the same bushing concept and he reached out to some of his friends who effectively sent me a box of stuff as well so i've got two boxes of suspension bushes for one car but you know these things happen let me show you what we got in the maddie box first so other than his awesome stickers he sent me a full set plus some spares of the front upper control arm Dalaran bushes without any pulse cutters yet plus the front lower control arm forward and uh, there's two part there are two part kits so we've got two pieces pieces uh, forward and rear front bushes again without holes and he's also crazily sent me some of his awesome uh, intake manifold studs these are so cool because they have a little hex key so you can tighten them in he's got the nord lock washers they're such a nice kit sent these to me as well which is very very kind of him so anyway what we've got here are effectively blanks which i can use as spares which i can use to perhaps offset the holes i can do all sorts of cool things with these i could run different size bushes so he's effectively sent me these to play with which is super kind i paid i did have to pay him for the postage but he did all this for free he did it for nothing he sent me the parts for nothing which is such an honorable dude again i've mentioned this dude before please check out hm speed shop in hawaii he also make, makes a bunch of other really neat high-end quality stuff for, for the miata into including the sway bar kit that i run on my car along with really nice wheel nuts along with things like these uh, intake manifold bolts so so much cool stuff let's have a look at what sad fab offer in their full kit now this sad fab solution is a bit more extensive because it's a full suspension replacement kit so we get the rear upper control arm inner delrin bush we've got front lower control arms rearwards in poly we've got another set of polys for the rear lower control arms we've got front lower control arms in delrin We've got front upper control arms in Dalaran. We've got the rear upper control arm outers in Poly. We've got a set of rear lower control arms in Dalaran and rear lower control arm outers in Dalaran. Plus some Zerks to lube it all. Plus under the advertising, very interesting. You can look at what the groceries cost in America or furniture. So, plus all of the necessary sleeves for each of the different types of suspension arm. So, we have again rear upper control arm inners, 
we've got the front upper control arm, rear lower control arm, rear lower control arm, front lower control arm, and the rear lower and front lower control arms for the rear. These are the bronze bushed sleeved solution for poly and we've got some washers which also need to go in this part of the kit. So all of the parts that don't have the extra bronze, bronze sleeve, so which is all of these, they have Dalrin bushes, all of these bronze sleeved uh, pins are for the poly bushes so that we still have that, as I mentioned, the poly can stick, this prevents the sticking. And of course the Zerks, so that we can keep everything lubed to keep it clean, keep it free from moisture and help it keep itself lubed up. But it doesn't need to always be there because the bushes will still be able to hopefully move, unlike the poly where no matter how much lubing you do, they still get stuck. So this is a lot of bits, right? And well, let's be honest, suspension bush changes aren't exactly easy, particularly if you've got to get out old rubber bushes that have been there for 20 years. Thankfully, because these bushes aren't insanely old and they're poly, hopefully they'll come out fairly easy. But we've got some cool stuff here. I've got the Dalaran bushes plus the sleeves from Sadfab plus the poly bushes with the bronze sleeve sleeves here. Plus we've got the Zerks so that we keep it all lube. Plus we've got the washers. And we've got the awesome gear from Maddie with a bunch of spare Dalaran stuff. So if I want to play with things or try something different or I don't know. There's so many options here, but for, for now, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to install the SADFAB kit. We're going to go throw that in in its kind of standard form and see how it works out. But the actual installation does require a few kind of special notes. Now, the kit doesn't come with anything else. So you might have noticed there was a lack of installation instructions. SADFAB do have a PDF, which I have printed, which details how to put it all together and it's pretty much completely covered everything is in there so I won't go into all the specifics but have a squeeze at their PDF on their website uh, nothing too glamorous but it's very clear and straight to the point you are going to need a few bits and pieces to do this properly when you pull your old suspension out you'll want to give the bore inside the suspension arms a clean out if it has any bits of rust or burrs or any little gunk so files, wire brushes some of these on your drill might be necessary to clean those out when you put the new Dalaran bush into the suspension arm, it may deform slightly and the suggestion as per the doco is to ream out the hole using a 7 8 drill bit. I don't have 7 8 drill bit because we're in Australia and we like metric so I bought a 22 millimeter drill bit which is 0.2 mil smaller than a 7 8 so it might take me a little bit longer to ream it out with that but hopefully that'll work. You also need a smaller drill bit a 732 to drill a hole for your Zerk fittings and then a tap to tap the thread for the Zerk. I don't again have a 732 but I do have a 5.5mm which is just a smidge smaller than 732 so the 5.5mm drill bit should work fine. Uh, you'll also want some lube or grease to put it clean it, uh, glue it all together, you'll want some rags to clean up the gunk, you'll want some degreaser to also clean up the gunk and then obviously a drill. Other than that you're going to need things like vices uh, clamps, any of that stuff to get the old bushes out and get the new ones in. I'm not going to go into detail on that, that's obvious straightforward stuff. But, you know, use your common sense, don't load suspension in weird ways, only compress the bushes into one another, don't do anything stupid like squeeze the whole suspension arm where you start to bend things incorrectly, don't be silly. There's actually a good photo detailing exactly what I'm talking about here, you can see where a suspension arm has been compressed incorrectly here where they've tried to force bushes in the wrong way and you shouldn't do that. You want to clamp only around here, not around the whole arm where it ends up compressing the arm. So keep in mind. So yes, as I mentioned, you do also need to drill a hole and tap a thread for your Zerk fittings. You need to drill it into your suspension arms. And again, I highly recommend you review the doco and make sure you're drilling in the right spots depending on which, uh, which which suspension arm there's going to be the ideal location for where you drill your Zerk 
fitting hole um, to ensure it doesn't hit subframes or hubs or anything and to also ensure that you can get access to the Zerk with your grease gun. And a couple of final points. You may be asking why is the kit half poly, half Dalaran? And it's fairly simple. Effectively because this point and this point are both on cam bolts and we can move the suspension in and out in different angles. You would get binding if they were both Dalaran only because there wouldn't be enough give to allow that suspension to shift enough. You effectively would get those two um, points no longer perfectly parallel and they'd bind up. So one of those needs to be poly to give us enough give for them to all work properly. And I guess the last thing is, when are we going to install it? Unfortunately not today. The weather's not real good and it's getting dark already here. So effectively this will just be part one where we've covered off all the detail of the kit and how to install it and sort of a summary on why we're here and why we're going to do it. Next time I'll actually throw it all in the car. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Ta. Oh yeah, I forgot to add. I paid full retail to SADFAB plus the insane Aussie postage costs and I paid Maddie for the postage of his parts but he did them all for love. I didn't pay him for the actual parts. So again, thanks Maddie. Thanks SADFAB. Let's see how this stuff works out, huh?